Let's begin, if we could, with, with the, the news this morning about uh, explosions within Damascus itself. I mean, obviously, we're not hearing too much about it. It doesn't seem as if it's a major event, um, but nonetheless, the, the symbolism of bringing the fight to Damascus at this stage uh, it, it appears to be fairly potent. How do you read this? You are right. We are not sure whether the explosion took place or not. There are some, um, big, you know, uh, contradicting reports. Um, if it, it has already, if somebody has, has attacked that, that building, then this is a new escalation um, in a direction that I don't think we would like to see. Yeah, um, we don't want to see a move from the peaceful demonstration into, uh, you know, an open uh, war um, by, by the opposition uh, in, inside Syria. Well, I mean, this, this issue of whether these demonstrations are peaceful or otherwise has always been certainly as we heard there from the president uh, he has insisted that they've not been peaceful that there has been violence against members of the, of the armed forces and the security forces in damascus and that has prompted him to take the strict action he's taken and you know you, you have to you have to admit that in, in the past couple of weeks at least we have seen video we have seen evidence that some of these protesters are armed and well armed so the the the, the suggestion that this is moving into a new um, military conflict rather than a peaceful protest scenario seems to be fairly well supported. Let me assure you and your, your audience that the, really the revolution has been very peaceful. Uh, there is a narrative put out by the regime that there are gangs, uh, criminal gangs, and we have rejected this narrative and, and insisted that those gangs are security forces uh, wearing you know, civilian uh, um, outfits and they are accompanying more uniformed uh, you know, uh, security forces. So we don't accept that, 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 that narrative. It is not true. It is a, a ploy just to justify the use of violence by the regime against essentially peaceful uh, demonstrations. All right. Well, I mean, let's, let's, re let's accept your rejection of that narrative for a second. But as I'm saying, there is a, a new situation seems to be arising. Some defectors from the army using weapons against uh, the forces themselves. And as I say, we have seen video of weapons in the hands of people who are not security forces. That's true. There are defectors and we hold the regime responsible for this situation. These are military forces, officers and soldiers trained by the military. And they have been forced to defect because the president and his lieutenants are asking, asking him to attack civilians. So they, they have all the, the, the obligation not to fight civilians and now they are fighting back those who are cornering them and trying to make their life, you know, miserable. So are you telling me that the position of the Syrian opposition right now is that those defectors from the army and anybody else within the opposition movement who are legitimate supporters of the opposition movement, that should they have arms, they should lay those arms down and not use them in any context? We recognize the right of the defectors to defend themselves. I mean, definitely with this brutal regime, if they give up their, their arms, they would be killed on the spot or tortured. We have a lot of, of examples of that. So we can't ask them to do that. That would not be right. What we would like to see is that the outside world become more serious about stopping the killing of civilians so that this situation will not develop into uh, an open conflict. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thanks very much indeed okay, for coming sure. in. Louis Safi from Sirius National.